2024 World Chess Championship continues between Gukash and Ding. I got one word to describe today's game. Boring, but still going to bring you the action anyway. That's what we do here. Now, there are going to be games like this. This is a World Championship after all. Uh, the players, I mean, basically didn't play that much today. However, there were uh, a few reasons why uh, the game was interesting. Let's have a look at it. Ding had the white pieces. He also just won his first game with black. So we have an interesting situation where, honestly, both players don't really need to do that much this game. Uh, for Gukesh, he lost. There, he was stunned in round one of the World Championship. So getting any points on the board, even half a point, would be fantastic. And Ding already got a win with black. So, I mean, it's kind of like in, in tennis when you break serve. There's no need to break serve again. So we start with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and bishop b5 would be the Rui Lopez. Bishop c4 is, of course, the Italian game. Uh, these are very, very well-known openings. Bishop c5, d3. If you guys are playing in your games, this would be maybe the Evans Gambit. c3 is really, really common uh, in order to play d4. Uh, or you may be a... Jerome Gambit Enjoyer. Ah, that's that's for a different video. That's for a different video. Okay, okay. Sorry about that. Um, D3. Now, this is a very slow move for sure. Um, it doesn't really have immediate intention C3, D4. And we can see after Knight F6, Knight C3, A6, and A4 that the intentions are definitely very slow. The move A4 seems kind of cagey. Uh, yeah, you know, both sides are just protecting their bishop here. Moves with the A pawn are kind of important to stop moves like knight A4 or knight to A5. Um, should be noted here that if black ever plays knight A5, the pawn would also be hanging. So um, for that reason, you know, D6 kind of has to be played. But for black, A6 needs to be played right away because knight A4, you know, could be could be possible um especially if if knight a5 is not possible because of this pawn white has e4 defended so knight a4 is kind of an idea as soon as uh this move gets played okay a6 a4 d6 and we're pretty much back to status quo white castles h6 now for me i was definitely looking at the move bishop to g4 because uh, you know, all the way back to my Building Habits series. I mean, we're talking World Championship. I'm taking us all the way back down to ground zero. The move Knight D4 is just, it's so good, right? It's happening next, taking advantage of the pin. The Knight's not able to go to D2 to defend the Knight. And the Bishop is not on the inside of the pawn chain, so it can't break the pin either. Now, the reaction to this surely would be H3. But after Bishop H5, it's the move that we play here that's important. And it's kind of helpful to... Think about how you can break these pins. Bishop e3 should be the first move that we're aware of. At least after knight d4, we can take that. So that's uh, one way to deal with this pin. g4 is the other one. But believe me, the move g4, you're, you're going to have to deal with this. And it's not pleasant. Okay, knight g4 and bishop g4, especially with the knight coming in, queen coming out, is it's just uncomfortable. No other way to say it. So after bishop to h5 i think probably knight d5 has to happen if not bishop e3 and it's not really g4 knight d5 with the idea being that after the knight comes in then maybe we can play for that g4 move so this is probably what we have to do um but i thought that this was an interesting attempt because there's not a good way to deal with this pin other than a very specific combination of getting rid of this knight so that maybe we can play the g4 move a little bit easier um so kind of kind of complicated stuff but bishop g4 obviously was not played in favor of h6 and white plays bishop e3 now this one i think we can understand we've seen this before we understand that the the pawns doubled here is actually a good thing after bishop e6 we see an interesting moment where honestly i <laughs> grandmasters have to take a moment and do some explaining for the people out there because how the heck is everybody in this position supposedly okay with not just this 
set of doubled pawns, but this one as well. So for example, after bishop e6, it's white's turn. What if I take? You're telling me black's okay with this position? Yeah, surprisingly, they are. Doubled isolated pawns, but there's two very clear squares for the knights to go. Meanwhile, this pawn keeps the white knights out of some other squares that might be useful. If the pawn was on f7, I might be trying to get knight to d5. Most likely knight to f5 as well, but the pawn on e6 does a fantastic job there. And to top it off, after black castles, the open f file can be used too. And the same thing goes for white. So that's why we see the move a5 being played by Ding. The engine doesn't love this move, but I thought it looked very normal to me, gaining some space and inviting black now to do the same thing, which works out the exact same way for white. White gets knight d5 and knight h4, knight f5. Meanwhile, this pawn keeps the black knights out of those squares. So um, yeah, just weird pawn structure, but these doubled isolated pawns are actually good. Open f file, open d file, two great squares for the knights and lots of space. Meanwhile, no easy knight jumps for black. And another reason I like to move a5, kind of a bit of a tougher move to explain, but um, we know that this knight on c3 is going to move. When it does, we have c3 and b4 that follow, and then the pawn structure does make a lot of sense. We can see white space advantage. So white can play knight d5 or knight e2, followed by those c3 and b4 moves, and then the expansion with this a pawn does make sense. So we see one exchange, but not two. Black castles, and at this point, white's kind of a little bit stuck. Um, it's tough to make make a move here because black can always leave the bishop on c5. So white says, okay, I'll trade. Both sides have done that. White plays b3 and we get a position that's honestly very boring. Queen's exchange, rook goes for more exchanges. Um, at this point, again, slightly tough to explain, but white knows that when the knight comes in to d4, it's temporary. At some point, we will be able to play c3 and kick the knight out. Whereas for black, if I play knight d5 and black does the same kind of moves, knight e8, rook c8, move the knight c6, c6 is much worse for black than it is for white. So hopefully that makes some sense here. Let me just take the knights away and just play this move and this move. And we can see the difference. White is maybe planning on b4 and certainly all these pawns are very well defended and not an issue. Black, on the other hand, because of this A pawn, that's the one difference in this position. If the pawn was on A4, completely even. But this pawn on C5 is super weak. If a knight gets to A4, knight gets to D3, that pawn is very, very tough to defend. So it just means like on a very, very minute level, white is happier with the position because the D5 square is a bit more uh, useful than the D4 square because it's harder for black to actually eliminate the knight with c3, uh, c6 rather, compared to white's c3. So for that reason, I think white has a very small advantage here. We see Ding realizing that, bringing the knight back, knowing he can kick that dangerous d4 knight out at any point, king over, covering e2, and then the rook comes back, f3, so the knight can finally move. And honestly, I, I don't know if I'm being too harsh here, h5, knight e2, and we saw a repetition here. You know, spoiler alert, you guys repeat it. They had a draw. Um, so this was the moment right here. And okay, h4 to me looks like a very decent move. Do I think that this position is winning? No, I do not. Do I think that white is slightly better? I do. Uh, it's mainly because of this pawn on a5. However, I just, I just look at this position and I start to wonder, you know, would, would Magnus play it on? Would Magnus make something happen with this position? My feeling is probably yes. I don't know if he would manage. I don't know if he would actually win the game, but I feel like he would try a little bit. Uh, so yeah, I really can't say anything about Ding's decision. He's clearly in a slightly better position. He's played fine. Um, he won his first game. Yeah, take the draw. Don't need to overexert yourself. It's a super long match. But there is a little bit of me 
that is like, wait a minute, you know, we had we had some chances to keep improving the position as white. It felt like white finally stabilized everything and maybe now was ready to uh, maneuver the pieces. I was really liking knight a4 as an option, uh, hitting that pawn. I don't think that it's winning, but I do think that it's a position you can play on because it doesn't look that risky for white. Bottom line, I think Gukesh is happier with the draw from this current position, but I can totally understand the decision from both sides. Gukesh, happy to have half a point on the board. Ding, you know, he already did the hard work in game one. As I said with the tennis analogy, no need to break serve twice. He's already done it. He's just going to enjoy, uh, enjoy things here um, with a draw. So it's one and a half to half. That's game two. Not going to go into too much detail on a game that these guys didn't go into too much detail on. But as usual, you can find these recaps here every morning that there is a world championship game. I'm curious, what do you guys think of the world championship match so far? My thoughts are that it's going to be an exciting one. We have two guys that are ready to fight. Um, and then this is a perfect example of how even fighters need some rest. But um, I definitely think this is going to be a good world championship match and I was joking yesterday on stream that you know I'm not sure that Magnus is the, the the best world champion after all because the guy just wins or he draws he just doesn't seem to lose and at least these guys are both willing to lose and willing to to take those risks that um that make for exciting games so I think we have that going for us I will see you guys tomorrow morning for game number three Gukesh will be back with the white pieces and will certainly be looking to make a better impression than last time.